For portable live streaming on the go, keep your phone charged with the Anchor PowerCore 10,000, one of the smallest and lightest external batteries you can get. Affiliate link below. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater and Star Wars. We're going to talk about Star Wars. More importantly, Star Wars Episode Nine and its director, Colin Trevorrow. Now, you might recognize that name as the dude who kind of relaunched the Jurassic World franchise. Uh, you know, Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater, and we're going to be talking about Star Wars, Episode 9, more importantly. Actually, it's director Colin Trevorrow. Now, you might recognize that name as the dude who made Jurassic World and kind of reinvigorated our love of dinosaurs again. Even if you think the movie uh, isn't very good, you can't really argue with its box office success. One and a half billion dollars. I mean, shit, even Marvel, who thought they were going to own the summer with fucking Age of Ultron, sent him out a message saying, y'all y'all did good. Y'all, y'all did good. Then, of course, they took that back the next year with fucking uh, Captain America. Uh, but the point is, is that Colin Trevorrow is a name. He's a name. He, he He's worked on the big budget stuff, Jurassic World, and he's going to be going and writing and directing uh, Star Wars Episode Nine, uh, or at least directing it. I think working off of a draft of Ryan Johnson's screenplay or story, I think he's going to be adapting it. But the point is, that might all be in question right now if you listen to the movie traits. Now, we're seeing this weird, weird thing this weekend because Colin Trevorrow's passion project, The Book of Henry, came out and it's not getting good reviews. In fact, Rotten Tomatoes has it down to a 25%. You guys all know how I feel about Rotten Tomatoes. The audience score is a lot higher, by the way, but but a lot of reviewers are just completely panning this movie constantly. Uh, <laughs> this is and, and and I'll and I'll get into the whole point here, but this is what uh, the Hollywood Reporter's John DeFore says in regards to this movie, saying those of us who allowed ourselves to care about the latest Star Wars trilogy may be fearful about the prospect of an Episode Nine directed by Trevor Rowe. The garden variety blockbuster lameness of his Jurassic World was one thing. After this near catastrophe, can he really be tr trusted with the fate of the Jedi? And that is just a fuck you comment right there. Holy crap, man. He's just beating the shit out of him with that. First and foremost, the lameness of the Jurassic World. That's fucking dumb. You had Jimmy Puffett running out of fucking uh, Margaritaville. Eat a dick. Right. And the movie was good, too. I, I really liked the movie. I felt that, yes, it was very much like episode seven, kind of easing us back into this world. Expect more from the next ones. These these are franchises that were, were basically dead and trying to breathe new life into them. They're going to go back to the roots. And that might be a little bit they might have played it a little bit too easy. But ultimately, the movie was still very well done. And and, and I, I fucking love that goddamn thing. Um, so the point is here is that you, you, with this comment coming out from DeFore saying, like, can he be trusted with episode nine? Uh, and he's not the only one to say that. Many, many, many other people out there are running think pieces and op-eds about whether or not this is going to hurt Trevorrow's chances to direct the film because they haven't even started production on it yet. That's going to be happening relatively soon, given the year and a half turnaround uh, between episode eight and episode nine. Yeah, none of that two year shit, motherfuckers. We're talking goddamn Memorial Day 2019, not holiday 2019. Oh, that could change. But I think Avatar 2, no, not Avatar 2. That's 2020. But the point here is that we're seeing, I, I, like, I'm trying to really wrap my brain around this one. Why are all of these critics, right? Like, why are they looking at a passion project? Uh, and, and they're going like, this is going to kill his chance to do episode nine. This is going to kill episode nine. Man, we are still two fucking years away from episode goddamn nine. Do you really think that, like, it's being made without the oversight of fucking Lucasfilm? You think Kathleen Kennedy is just like, hey, Colin. Yeah, go do what the fuck you want. I, I fucking trust you, you fucking... Get out of here, you fucking crazy kid. I fucking love that guy, Colin. Great movie, Jurassic World. She's not doing that at all. No one, no one at Lucas is doing that. The same thing I talked about in my last video about Ryan Johnson and how he's making uh, The Last Jedi. You, There's going to be oversight. Okay, these movies are not made in a vacuum. There are a lot that go into them. These are studio-produced films, like the most studio-produced movies. Their goal is to tell you the best possible story, and they could fuck that up. They can entirely fuck that up. But here's the thing, though, is yes, Trevor Rowe wrote and directed The Book of Henry. The concept is very weird, but I hear, like, it, it, while it misses in a few areas, it does actually look pretty good in other areas. It's one I do want to see. Uh, he's not going to screw up Star Wars because he's going to have J.J. Abrams on board as a producer, and if they feel like he might fuck it up, J.J. Abrams will be on set 
hundred percent of the time, right? I'm pretty sure JJ Abrams or maybe Spielberg or like some fuck Lucas could even be on set. Most of the guy that, that wouldn't happen. That would happen, but he's fine. But what really bothers me about this though, is that this is like this almost, it, it doesn't really feel like a planned attack to go after Trevorrow here. It feels like people are just expressing their own doubt on episode nine and whether or not it's going to be in the cap- in the hands of this person, if he's going to be capable to do it. And they're, you know, and I get it. You're only as good as your last picture, but I feel like this shit's unnecessarily mean, right? Like this is unnecessarily mean. Like I reached out to a couple of different movie critics to ask their take on it. One of them got back to me real quick and I'm like, Oh, do you think he's going to lose it? And he goes like, no, they're, I mean, even if they're like a little bit hesitant after this, he's still on board. Like they're still going to go ahead. They've already pushed it out there. The only way this wouldn't happen would be if he walked away from the project, which that could, that could, that could happen. Uh, it could entirely happen. But even Trevor Rowe has kind of responded to this uh, on Twitter by saying, be proud of everything you paint, even if mom doesn't put it on the fridge, right? Which is a great line. It's a great line. Be proud of what you make. The book of Henry to him is a personal project. This is what usually happens after a director makes a big, big, big movie that does very well is they're kind of given a blank check to go make what they want. Look at Ben Affleck, for example. Affleck made Argo for Warner Brothers, one best picture, went on to go do the 75 million live by night, which failed to connect. Never mind the fact that uh, they dumped it in January which is the worst time of the year to release a movie. And here it is six months later and live by night isn't even on home video yet. Makes me wonder if Warner's is just going to dump it out at some point in time and just hope that no one actually saw it, which really tells me that that movie is bad because I figured by now I would have been able to see it. The point I'm trying to get through here is that these things do happen. They do happen. But the next time Affleck gets behind the camera on something, I'm pretty sure he's going to knock it out of the fucking park. All right. Like everyone stumbles and falls in this industry and not everything is going to be grand. But to sit there and go after the man and his future prospects is one of the most cowardly, childish, shittiest things I think anyone who works in Hollywood can do. You're going after a dude who made a movie that maybe didn't resonate well with you, but you're trying to use your platform to systematically instill fear among the masses to put pressure on Kathleen Kennedy and Lucasfilm to pull him. That's what you want. That's, that's what this whole thing's about. You're trying to force their hand through public pressure and 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 get them to, to pull this guy. They they ain't gonna do it for one. Let's let's just let's, I mean let's just kind of lay it all out there. All right. The likelihood of you guys actually getting butts and seats on movies anymore, low. The likelihood of someone like me getting more butts and seats on something, probably a little bit higher, given the region of impact. All right. Movie critics, movie bloggers, for the longest time, have been shitting on movies to the point of where it's almost an art form now to be a cynical, condescending prick when it comes to the movies and i think this exactly exemplifies that point right it's i didn't like this movie destroy everything this guy's got going for him that's horse shit that's absolute fucking horse shit you, you can like the movie or dislike the movie but you got to give the guy a shot to go back and you know and learn from his mistakes filmmaking is an evolutionary process you are always growing as an artist you're always going to be better and maybe worse in some ways than your last picture sometimes you just get lucky and everything clicks And it just works out for your benefit, and sometimes it doesn't. And the thing is, though, is that you can't expect everything to be perfect all the time. Everything in this world has flaws. And if something is being sold to you as perfect, someone's selling you a load of shit. There's nothing wrong with calling out the flaws of something. But there is something wrong about calling out the flaws of a movie and hoping that it gets the guy pulled from his next directorial gig. The gig, probably, he's most excited for in this world. Right. I mean, I think anyone in Hollywood right now that would be like, oh, hey, do you want to direct a Star Wars movie? Would be like, oh, you know, it's tears, tears, because that's like them getting the opportunity to go back to their childhood and play in that sandbox again. And honestly, I don't you know what I, I don't need. I know Colin doesn't need me defending him here, but I just gotta say, fuck you to these people. Fuck you to these people that are trying to do that. All right. Let the man work. He'll learn from his mistakes here and he'll take it to Star Wars. And hopefully he'll make it a better movie as a result of that. You got to give him a fucking chance. But again, it pays more in this day and age to be negative and be bitter than it does to be positive and enthusiastic. I like to pride myself as being a positive and enthusiastic person when it comes to talking about movies. So to Colin Trevorrow, you won't ever fucking see this. But if you do by chance see this, man, you do you, kid. I'll be there fucking Memorial Day weekend 2019 with my little Jedi that I'll be having 
the end of this year and take him to go see the movie or her, whomever. I don't care. Whatever it is, we're going to go see it because it's going to be totally something I want to do with my kid. Take them to go see Star Wars like my, my, my parents did with me. That's what you can give me. And that's why I'm totally behind you on this one. Same with Jurassic Park. You're not doing Jurassic World. I know that too, but you're heavily involved. So anyway, my name is Matt Jarbo. This has been Through Buck Theater. What do you guys think? Write it down in the comments below. I'll talk to you guys later. Have yourself a fantastic day. Also join up on the Reddit if you want to get further into the conversation. Uh, support the channel if you want. And I'll talk to you guys later. Have yourself a great one. Peace out.